Hello and welcome to Bread of Life. This week, Pastor Andre Riendo of Bloomfield reminds us to pray for the persecuted church, this Sunday being the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. Hello, beloved ones. I am so happy to be with you today by radio in the sovereignty of God. Each November, churches around the world take either the first or the second Sunday of the month and they pray for the persecuted church. We've been doing so at our church for about 15 years now, and it's been an honor to do so. I hope your church is praying for persecuted brothers and sisters around the world in some way this year. Now, in honor of this special emphasis, I have spent this entire week thinking about persecution by by looking at a passage in Matthew chapter 10 where Jesus commissions his followers to go and make him known in spite of the tremendous opposition they're going to face. Now, yesterday, we considered a few promises that Jesus gave his believers that they can stand upon. First of all, he said, um, don't be afraid because everything that you do will be vindicated in the end in the courts of heaven. And then secondly, he says, don't be afraid of those who can kill the body but can't touch your soul. Today, I'd like to look at the third promise he gives, and starting in verse 29. Jesus says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet now one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care, and even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Jesus promises that our suffering will not go unnoticed. So we need not be afraid because he says that he sees everything that happens, even to the smallest sparrows. His eye is on the sparrow. Will he not then notice what happens to his children whose hairs are numbered? (laughs) Numbered! Our God sees He knows. He cares. God will not let all of this go. In his time, at his throne, for all eternity, he promises to make all things right. We can bank on that promise. And now, he promises us his very presence and care and says we can entrust our lives to him. You know, one sister we've been praying for many years is a woman I'm sure many of you have heard of, Asia Bibi. She's been in the news quite a bit. She is uh, was a woman accused of blaspheming Allah in Pakistan. And as of the time of this recording, she's remained in jail since her arrest on these charges in June of 2009. She has spent many, many years, apart from her husband and daughters, in a cold prison cell. Imagine how lonely She must have felt day after day. Yet God has not forgotten her. At one point, she shared this, quote, There's a beautiful thing that happens every day in my cell. Two days after they announced my death penalty, I was brought into death row. And every morning, around 3.30 or 4, a brown bird with a long beak appears and sits on the boundary wall. This bird also comes every evening around 5. He sits there for 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the evening. Later on, he became my friend. I talk to him, and he talks to me. (laughs) As I watch this bird every day, I try to understand the meaning of him coming day after day, and I think that this is a messenger from God giving me his message. When the bird comes, I feel encouraged and peaceful. I feel comforted after his visit. I think this is a very significant sign from God, end quote. Amen. If Jesus promises that every tiny sparrow is personally cared for by the Father, will he not personally care for each of us? An older praise song reminds us, He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. He sees. He knows. He cares. And if we have eyes to see it, he can remind us even with little brown birds in prison cells. Lord, give us eyes to see your peaceful presence even in the prison cells that we find ourselves in. 
Amen. You've been listening to Pastor Andre Riendo of Bloomfield talking about the persecuted church and reminding us that this Sunday is the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. This has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.